This South Pacific mission ship was formerly a British coaster. She has been fitted out by the London Missionary Society and paid for mostly by pennies from children in the Commonwealth. A farewell service is held alongside at Auckland before the ship sails for Apia and Suva. After the service, the ship is open to visitors and children are able to see for themselves the ship their pennies helped to buy. A worthy successor to the long line of ships which have borne the name of the pioneer missionary, John Williams. This diver at the Waikaremoana outflow is going down to explore the holes in the floor of the lake. It's not everybody in a public works camp that can have two valets to rig him out in his working gear. This looks like a good way to end an argument. But as a matter of fact, the diver is not so cut off from the world as you might think, for he can still talk back by telephone. Because of frequent high winds and waves, a crane is used to lower divers right onto the job. The object is to prevent water going to waste, which might go to the powerhouses. The leaks which are found in the lake floor are similar to the sumps, which drain many bush clearings in the same district. And to avoid getting out of our depth, we'll take a look at some of these places. This big bush clearing, for example, drains entirely into a sump hole on its eastern edge. This one, called the clay patch, also disposes of its rainfall by an underground route. Lake Henrietta nearby has no visible outflow. Rainfall is high in the bush country, but all the runoff from this basin ultimately sinks into the ground. Back at Waikaramana, only part of the water flows out through the lake bed, but the divers have located a hundred or so underwater leaks. The stopping of these leaks by dumping suitable spoil checks this waste of power, making much more water available to flow through the great siphon pipes and down to the three serried power stations at Kaitawa, Tuai and Piripa. If the divers are fully successful in their task, it will mean a bit more power, or a bit less power shortage, for the North Island in years to come. Puramua Station near Wairoa is the home of the Carroll family the best known of whom, the late Sir James Carroll, was MP for Eastern Māori and then for Gisborne, and for many years the senior member of the Cabinet. Puramua has long been farmed and developed by Mr Turi Carroll, who recently decided to reduce his own holding that the land might be farmed more intensively and support more people. He leaves the homestead to go out and inspect the work on the new subdivisions. Much of the Carroll estate has now passed to the rehab department, and modern homes are built, widely spaced across the old sheep runs. Modern homes for former members of the Maori Battalion. Most of the work of breaking in the score of new Maori farms is being done by farming trainees on the estate. far out from the training camp have lunch brought out to them. Others take their lunch in the camp dining room. Most of these trainees are candidates for farms on the Huramua estate. Once in the army together, they're now training together to be successful farmers in a new Maori community. Water is just as much a fundamental requirement of farms as it is for industry and for cities. The trainees lay pipes to the paddocks and milking sheds to bring water from the Wairoa River. One pump house on the river bank supplies water to be shared among 15 farms. Out in the paddocks, drinking troughs are needed, and the trainees cast them on the spot in concrete using corrugated iron shuttering. Rainwater is depended on to supply the modern all-electric homes and is stored in tanks of over 5,000 gallon capacity. 
Six of these homes are already occupied, and inside they conform to all modern requirements. They have two bedrooms and a sun porch, and an overall area of about 960 square feet. were as good as this, there would be a great improvement in the health of Maori children. Already, the new Huramoa settlement is becoming a recognized Maori community. The tennis courts were laid by farm trainees in their spare time, and the Maori tennis championships of the Wairoa district are being played on them, entrants coming from most of the settlements between Mohoka, Waikaremoana, and the Mahia. day begins before dawn for three of the trainees, learning what it is to be cow cockies. The milking herd consists of a hundred crossbred jerseys. By most people's breakfast time, the first big job of the day is over. All jobs are taken in rotation. Culling is important in all types of stock farming, and here breeding ewes are being culled for poor teeth, those whose dentures are not up to standard getting one-way tickets to the freezing works. Three of the trainees stay on this job for a fortnight. The commercial growing of asparagus is another development at Huramoa. This block contains 23 acres of plants approaching their third year and next spring we'll see the first picking. The aim is to establish six or seven acres of asparagus on each of the new farms to add to the income to be made from sheep or dairy farming. Mr. Carlson, manager of the settlement, and Mr. Carroll, who is head of the tribal executive, are pleased with the progress the beds have made under cultivation by the trainees. Tomato growing on contract for the canneries is another sideline to dairying, and each trainee spends a fortnight on tomatoes. At present rates, these rows of dwarfs bring in a clear 60 pounds an acre. Vegetable growing on contract as a sideline to grass farming presents a new pattern in farm economics. The new farms for Wairo men of the Maori battalion are up to date in every way. Huramua will join such places as Horohoro, Tikiteri and Ruatoki, as highly productive settlements in the new pattern of Maori living. <laughs>